Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Celia would like to introduce you to Paul Frederick. Paul Frederick introduced himself to Cassandra on the 1st of August. He introduced himself to Celia on the 12th of August. Hello, he said. Thanks for accepting my friend request. Hi, said Celia. Nice to meet you. It's nice meeting you too, he said. How is the weather over there? Hot, said Celia. The UK was having its second heat wave. I'm sitting in front of a fan. Oh, really? He said. Yes, really, said Celia. Sorry about that. So where are you from? He asked. I live in Durham in the northeast of England. Where do you live? Oh, nice. I'm from Asheville, NC, he said. It's nice meeting you. So, how long have you been there? I'm 55, said Celia. I've lived here all my life. Oh, I see. I'm 61 of age, he said. Do you live there alone? I'm a widow, she said. And my son lives in Sydney in Australia. Oh, OK, he replied. I'm a hyperbaric welder. What do you do? OK, she said. I'm an administrator. I work in the admissions department of Durham University. It's quiet at work right now. We're waiting for the A-level results to come out next week. Then we'll be really busy. Oh, that's very nice, he said. What does hyperbaric mean? asked Celia. Ideal. On underwater pipelines. I go on rig contracts, he said. My work has taken me to different countries, like South Africa, China, UK, Mexico, Ireland, Hong Kong, Brazil, Venezuela, Asia, and I've been to many states in the USA. You know, exactly what he told Cassandra. You've done a lot of travelling, said Celia, but I asked you what hyperbaric means. Also, if you're a welder, why are you dealing in pipelines? Or do you do both? I didn't even know you could buy and sell pipelines. I do welder pipes, understand water rig and outside only. I don't buy and sell pipelines, was his enlightening answer. I do go for jobs contracts. I have no idea what I do welder pipes, understand water rig and outside means, replied Celia. And fair warning, ladies and gentlemen, because I keep forgetting this bit. If you're eating or drinking, please swallow now. Typo error, he said. I meant I weld underwear pipelines. To which Celia, after much thought, because it took me three hours to think of a suitable answer, replied, Why? Or is that a front for something else? Think about it, and that might be a UK thing. LOL, don't worry. In time you will get to understand my work, he said. How's your day going? It's going to be hot again today, said Celia. So I've already been into town to do my shopping. I think I'm going to spend the day sorting out my cupboards. I have no idea what an underwear pipeline is. Maybe you could explain your work so I can understand it. Yeah, he said. I will on a call. How's that? Good morning. Can we talk in a talk in a more convenient platform so we can get to know each other better, he asked. Why can't you call me here? asked Celia. I don't use Messenger quite often, he said. Are you on Google Chat? Yes, she said. I'm on chat and gave him her email address. And so, of course, they moved to chat. Over on chat, he said, hello, dear. It's nice having you here. How's your day going? Hi, said Celia. Did you say you were going to call me and tell me what I weld underwear pipelines means? Yeah, he said. OK, said Celia. About five minutes later, I'm waiting for your call. It never came. Good evening, Celia, he said at one o'clock in the morning, followed by one of those good morning gifts. Good morning, Celia. Good morning, said Celia on Sunday morning. How are you doing, he asked. I'm fine, thanks, she said. Can I call you? Are you on chat, hangouts or Facebook? I'm here, he said. Where's here, asked Celia. Chat or hangouts? Google chat, he said. I don't use hangout. Are you still there? And so she tried calling him. Why aren't you talking to me, she asked. I'm talking to you, he said. I think the signal's really bad. OK, said Celia. I couldn't hear anything. I'll try Facebook. He tried calling her, but she couldn't hear him. Are you still there? Why are you not picking up? I'm calling you on Facebook, she said. I had to restart the laptop again. Let's forget about the calls for now and get to know each other better first, he said. No, said Celia. Please answer me on Facebook. What are you doing now, he asked. I'm calling you on Facebook, said Celia. 
Facebook isn't responding, he said. And I'll keep calling you until you answer. Oh, OK, I'll try again on here. Or you can try again on here. I'm trying to answer, he said, but I'm not seeing any call. So she tried calling him again. My phone ain't ringing, he said. I think Facebook's having problems, said Celia. It wouldn't let me answer last night. I've sent you a chat meeting invite. Yeah, he said. That's why I said let's leave it for some other time. You're up early. What's the time there? I've sent you a chat meeting invite, she said. It's 10.15. I'm taping it, he said. It's just there, he meant tapping. Please join, said Celia. Nothing's happening. Try sending me a link. And so they tried a bit longer. Nothing happened. And eventually he said, I give up. I'm going back to sleep. That activity, beloved of all scammers. It doesn't seem to be working, said Celia. I'll try again later. And it genuinely wasn't working. It wasn't that he was pretending not to answer. Can I have a picture of you now, he asked. My picture's on Facebook, she said. Can I have one of you right now, he asked. And he sent her a photograph of a man. Don't be lazy, said Celia. You're online on Facebook. Go and look there. I just took this picture, LOL, he said. I want you to do the same. And he sent her another photo. In case you're having reading difficulties, replied Celia, I'll repeat what I just said. Don't be lazy, you're online on Facebook. Go and look there. I understand what you're saying, he said. But why can't you take a different picture of you and send it to me? I did. Why can't you? It's not difficult. Just take a selfie and send it to me. To save me repeating myself, replied Celia, I'll just take a screenshot. And she sent him a screenshot of the bit where she'd said, go and look on Facebook. We have talks every month, she said, from the university cyber security team, telling us never to send photos of ourselves or our families online. So you don't trust me or what? He said, trying emotional blackmail. Just forget about it. Why do you think I shouldn't trust you? Asked Celia. That's a very strange thing to say, don't you think? Copying and pasting the bit where she told him about the cyber security team. Why do you keep repeating yourself, he said. Did I tell you I can't read? Because it's starting to look like you can't read, said Celia. Otherwise a gentleman wouldn't make such ridiculous statements. OK then, sorry for making such ridiculous statements, he said. Thank you, replied Celia. You're welcome, he said. For a military gentleman, said Celia, you do spend a lot of time asleep. Well, I don't have to stress myself doing anything, as for now, LOL, he said. What's your plans for today? I'm going to catch up on emails and phone some friends, said Celia. What are your plans for today? Well, I don't know yet, he said. I'll probably go watch a movie with my daughter and get some ice cream. And you've probably realised that when Celia said for a military gentleman he spends a lot of time asleep, she was wrong, because, of course, he wasn't claiming to be a military gentleman, but he didn't seem to spot that. I thought you were going back to bed, said Celia. Can't any more, LOL, he said. Just want to talk to you. OK, she said. A movie and ice cream sounds good. As we can't manage to get the calls to work, perhaps you can explain to me what I weld underwear pipelines means, please. It's not a phrase I've heard before. Is it slang? OK, he said. Let me explain. Hyperbaric welding, he said, courtesy of Google, is the process of welding at elevated pressure, normally underwater. Hyperbaric welding can either take place wet, in the water itself, or dry, inside a specially constructed, positive pressure enclosure, and hence a dry environment. That doesn't tell me what an underwear pipeline is, though, said Celia. It's a pipeline! Underwater, he said, used to extract crude oil. Yes, said Celia. Is it some kind of slang term for an inferior pipe? Yes, said our man. OK, so a pipe that isn't usually used, she asked. Yeah, he said, but it's very functioning when we're on a contract. Why does it only function when you're on a contract, she asked. Why is it called an underwear pipeline? Not only when we're on a contract, he said, just that we make more use of it on a contract. It's not called underwear pipeline, it's underwater pipeline. Then why did you say it's an underwear pipeline and tell me it's a slang term for an inferior pipe? Asked Celia, copying and pasting that bit of the conversation. Oh, my bad, he said. I think it's a typo error. I'm sorry. OK, said Celia. Hope you understand my job now, he asked. OK, I think so, said Celia. You weld inferior pipes that are only used occasionally and which are underwater. How deep underwater are the pipes? 
Very, very deep, he said. Sorry for the delay. I had to go get coffee. How deep is very, very deep? Asked Celia. That's meaningless. OK, sorry, he said. About 150 kilometres deep. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a little bit of homework. I've asked my favourite search engine, what's the deepest part of the ocean? The deepest part of the ocean, it tells me, is the Challenger Deep, which is approximately 10,935 metres deep, which is 10 kilometres. And our man, remember, has just told Celia that he dives to 150 kilometres, 15 times as deep as the deepest part of the ocean. 150 kilometres? said a very impressed Celia. My goodness, you must be a very skilled diver. Yeah, he said, it's really deep. Yeah, I'm very impressed, said Celia. And he sent her a photograph of a diver. Adding underneath, this is a picture I took when working. That's your colleague, asked Celia. Yes, it is, he said, sending her another photo of another diver. And although you can't see very much in that photo, and I'm not going to show you the rest, I think you can see that that diver is just wearing goggles. He doesn't even have a full face covering on. Here is me, he said. OK, said Celia. How deep were you when that was taken? Not really deep, he said, but I guess might be 87 kilometres. Not very deep at all then, said Celia. No, not at all, he said, but it's really dangerous and risky going deeper because some shaker out there. About the distance from Durham to Ripon, said Celia. You can easily get there and back in a day. What's a shake? Sorry, I meant shark. Ah, said Celia, the dreaded deep sea shark. You have to be careful of them. And now we're going to do a bit more research. And this time I've asked, how deep do sharks live? Sharks, it tells me, courtesy of Wikipedia, are common down to depths of 2,000 metres, that's two kilometres. And some live even deeper, but they're almost entirely absent below 3,000 metres, that's three kilometres. And remember, our man now claims he's at 87 kilometres. And ladies and gentlemen, fair warning again, if you've started eating or drinking, I suggest you stop now. Celia has just said, ah, the dreaded deep sea shark. You have to be careful of them. Cue the Jaws music, but I won't because it's copyright. But just imagine it. Yeah, I know, he said. We do also found some water tortoise down there. I guess I had a picture of it. My goodness, said Celia, an entirely new species. Will you love to see it, he asked. Oh, yes, please, said Celia. OK, he said, and sent her a photo of a turtle followed by another photo of a turtle. This is a really big water tortoise, he said, running away from us at high speed, replied Celia. Obviously. Yeah, he said. So I guess you're OK with my job now. What do you mean, said Celia? It's none of my business how you decide to earn a living. Oh, yeah, he said. But you've been willing to know more about my job and how it goes. Oh, yes. Cecilia, it's really interesting learning about what you do. Yeah, he said, but it's not easy. So tell me more about yourself and family. My son lives in Sydney in Australia with his girlfriend, she said. I haven't seen them since before Covid. I'm hoping to go there after Christmas. Oh, I see, he said. But don't you both call each other's? Of course we do, said Celia. That's great. Do you have any brother or sister? No, I don't, said Celia. My mother lives in Guildford. Fair warning, ladies and gentlemen, if you've picked up anything to eat or drink in the last minute or two, please put it down. Wow! Is your mum still alive? No, said Celia. She died five years ago. I keep her mummified remains in her living room. Apart from telling me that I will call later, I have to attend my workers. You haven't told me where you're working. OK, he said, sending her a thumbs up. Presumably in reply to her telling him that she kept her mother's mummified remains in the living room. Meaning, said Celia, where are you working? I do work in Canada, he said. Where in Canada? asked Celia. Good morning, she said the next day. I'll be leaving for work soon. 
so he sent her a bunch of red roses. Good morning. Stay safe, he said. I'm only at work, replied Zelia. Hello, dear. How are you doing? Sorry, it has been a long busy for, for me. Really a busy day for me. Where are you in Canada? asked Celia. Basin, Canada, he said. I've never heard of it, said Celia. Where is it? A man clearly copied and pasted because, look, it's in a different colour typeface. It's located 350 kilometres east from the coast of Newfoundland. Good evening. How are you? Hope you had a great day. How long have you been there, asked Celia? I'm not there now. I'm just telling you where I will be going on my final contract, he said. You definitely told me you're working in Canada, she said, copying and pasting the bit where he said, I do work in Canada. I do work in Canada, he said. I didn't say I am working in Canada now. What's the difference between I do work in Canada and I am working in Canada? Asked Celia. I asked you, where are you working? Oh, sorry, he said. Been sleeping. So tired last night. I'm still home now. Not yet got approval for the contract in Canada. But guess we'll be called soon. Then I'll know where I'll be working. Just going to my office here in NC. Once I got approval for the job this week, then I'll let you know where I'll be working. OK, and where the contract will be in Canada. So the answer to my question is, I'm working in NC, said Celia. Where's your office? Why do you keep on asking so many questions? Like you're investigating me or stalking me, he said. Last thing I remember, I didn't ask you all these questions. We're supposed to be knowing each other better, but you're only interested in my work. I'm not asking you so many questions, said Celia. I simply asked where you're working, and you told me I do work in Canada. Then you told me you don't work in Canada. I keep asking you the same question to try to get a sensible answer out of you. If you just give me a proper answer, I'd only have to ask a question once. So yes, I'm getting to know you better. Someone who can't decide where he works, or doesn't work, and can't give a sensible answer. The choice is yours. Have a proper conversation, or go away. If we do continue talking, I'll give you meaningless generic answers to any questions you ask. You just ask a lot of questions, he said, and I don't think I've asked you any. You want to know more about me, or my job. I don't get you. Because when you ask, I give you a proper sensible answer, said Celia. When I ask, I have to ask dozens of times to get anything remotely sensible out of you. You work in Canada. You don't work in Canada. You work in some unspecified place in NC. Who knows where you work? But that's just all you care about, he said. Getting a sensible answer, replied Celia. Yes, I do care about that. What's the point in having a conversation with a man who talks meaningless drivel? It's the last chance. I'm not interested in debating your inability to answer a simple question. Sensible conversation. Or go away. Choice is yours. If we do continue talking, I'll give you meaningless generic answers to any questions you ask. Our man made his choice and disappeared. So I hope that the takeaway from this video is that if someone can't or won't answer your questions, ask again. And if they still can't answer your questions, just think very carefully about who you might be talking to. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. There's a like button underneath the video. Please share it with your family and friends and anyone that you think might need to learn about scammers. Please comment down below. I read all your comments. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another video.